This is HSC option three, sports medicine. And the key idea is what role do preventative actions play in enhancing the well-being of the athlete? As is the case with many medical conditions studied in core one, prevention can go a long way to stopping sports injuries from occurring. Physical preparation is about taking measures to reduce the risk of injury. Here is the syllabus for this dot point physical preparation. There are four dash points, pre-screening, skill and technique, physical fitness, warm up, stretching and cool down. Implementing these four dash points can reduce significantly but not eliminate sporting injuries from occurring. So the first dash point is pre-screening. Now pre-screening is attempting to prevent sporting injuries from occurring by using a questionnaire or running a series of tests to find information about the athlete. Before starting a new sport or new season or beginning a physical activity program, Pre-screening will go a long way, particularly for preventing serious medical problems such as heart attacks in some instances. Assessing the, the individual's current levels of fitness before the start of a new sport, new season or training program will provide in information on such things as current ish injuries or pre-existing medical conditions, past experience in the sport, determined current fitness levels and some personal information such as the age of the person and any issues such as being pregnant, for example. Now, often they will use a questionnaire that will look something like this, and they'll ask questions such as, has your doctor ever told you that you have a heart condition or have suffered a stroke? Now, they ask these questions, um, sporting clubs, gyms, or personal trainers, because they're looking for warning signs that may put the individual at risk of an injury and prevent, in some instances, liability for the gym, club, or trainer if they were to let that person train in their, in their gym. Some of the warning signs they're looking out for are heart conditions such as blood pressure, individuals over the age of 35 because of the particular health issues that they have, little or no previous experience with exercise or even playing a sport like rugby league. Now sporting clubs, particularly in heavy contact sports such as rugby league and rugby union, don't want people coming into their team who have had no experience before before giving them the proper training. It's okay once they've been given the proper training, but first that training has to be given. And pregnancy is another warning sign that they're particularly concerned about. With any health issues, it's likely the gym, sporting club or personal trainer will require a medical clearance before they will accept that person into, into their program or organization. Pre-screening is also used by professional sporting teams. When they sign a new player, they will perform a medical on the player to look for any potential of possible future injuries. The next dash point is skill and technique. Now an athlete's lack of skill or poor technique can contribute to an increased risk of injury during play. Now this is an example from an NRL game that's an example of poor technique leading to injury. The player gets his head in the wrong position when making a tackle and gets knocked out. As, you know, this skill and technique is particularly applicable in junior rugby league, teaching young players how to tackle correctly to lessen their chance of injury. Training and improving the skills of the athlete will go a long way to lowering the risk of injury. It's the coach's responsibility that players have the skills to keep them safe in the sport that they are playing. This can be particularly of concern in school sports where often teams are short and they drag in other players to make up the numbers without having any previous experience playing that sport. This can be particularly of issue in a game like rugby league when there are huge size disadvantages and students are forced into playing a sport that they do not have the technique or skill to play. Physical preparation or getting the body fit enables the body to deal with the demands of the sport and potentially avoid any injury. It is often players with a poor level of fitness who become fatigued or who get injured. Physical fitness does not just mean improving cardiovascular fitness but involves training all the necessary components for that particular sport. You can see on this clip that the players are training components of fitness other than cardio. There is a variety of reasons why they would do this, but one reason to practice agility, for example, is to give player the ability to avoid big tackles and therefore lower the risk of getting injured. Improving the power and strength of an athlete will help lower the risk of injury for the individual, but interestingly, may heighten the risk for others.
The final dash point for this dot point is warm up, stretching and cool down. Now both warm up and cool down are often overlooked by many coaches, but should be a part of any training and game day. The warm up achieves many purposes, but for this dot point we're going to concentrate on how it helps to prevent injury. A structured warm up program designed to improve awareness of knee and ankle control during landing and pivoting can prevent knee and ankle injuries. Now what this means is that putting the players through a structured session of running and jumping and dodging in the warm up will help prepare the body for the activity they are about to do. Studies have shown this can re reduce the rate of knee and ankle injuries by almost 50%. Research suggests that the use of dynamic stretches during a warm up, that is slow controlled movements through the full range of motion as you can see in this clip, are the most appropriate stretching for warming up. The cool down. The cool down should consist of something along the lines of the following. It should have five to ten minutes of light aerobic activity such as jogging or walking which decreases the body temperature and removes the waste product especially lactic acid. And then five to ten minutes of static stretching. Now static stretches are more appropriate for the cool down than dynamic stretching as they help muscles to relax and re-establish their normal range of movement. An appropriate cool down helps clear lactic acid that builds up during any activity, especially anaerobic activity. Less lactic acid means less soreness and stiffness the next day, which is known as DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. Stretching. Stretching activities should be part of every warm up and cool down. Some simple rules to follow when stretching to avoid injury include Warm up the body with aerobic, light aerobic activity prior to the stretching. Stretch your muscle groups that will be involved in the sport that's going to be played. Never bounce or stretch quickly and stretch gently to the point of mild discomfort but never pain. So that's it for physical preparation. Um, as always, see the textbook or consult your teacher for more information.